Did you know Megan Trainer married Junie from Spy Kids? It's, it's crazy. What's up? Hello, my name is Brie. Welcome to my channel. Brie the Womanikin, in case you were wondering how to say that last word in my name. So, Jenna Brown made a video about why she unsubscribed to Kelly Stamps, and Kelly Stamps stands are pissed. So some topics that I'm going to cover in this video are just a couple things that Jenna talked about in her own video, uh, such as I made a list, jealousy, fancy dates, hate watching, insecurities, not being entertained, and so on and so forth, dresses and whatnot. I have seen a couple of videos about this topic already. I just learned about it. Well, that's a lie. I learned about it a week ago. And I was just so interested in the topic that I'm like, I have to make a video, especially since like the reception since she made that video has not been good. I honestly can't believe she still has it out there on the internet, but I do think it's smart because it will keep people watching it because her opinion appears to be highly unpopular, um, especially in the black woman crowd. It seems as though a lot of black women are putting some pretty hefty allegations on her. They're saying that she's a hater. They're saying that she's always been jealous of Kelly Stamps. Honestly, I feel like the things that people have been saying about her is the stuff that she said about herself in the video, but I digress. So first off, I guess I should start off with like, I used to watch both Jenna Brown and Kelly Stamps. I don't know how I found Jenna Brown. I don't know if it's like I was a part of a Facebook group and for, you know, black women YouTubers and that's how I found her. I don't know if that's how it worked or if she just kind of popped up on my feed. I don't really quite remember. Kelly Stamps I found through when I wanted to start my own channel. I was, you know, she made a couple of videos. Don't want to flash you. Uh, she made a couple of videos about uh, like just giving general YouTube tips and whatnot and I did enjoy those tips and I thought those things were interesting and I watched those things. I also enjoyed uh, her story times. I could, re you know, I, I enjoyed the one where she quit her job at, what is that place called? Is it Cafe Sunflower? But I used to watch her videos then and uh they were entertaining i never watched her vlogs of her just walking around the city uh but i'm not a vlog watcher i don't watch anybody's vlogs i don't care to watch any video of people just kind of living their life and going about their day i know for some people they like that and it's very relatable to them um i never really cared for it for anybody i could relate to the very short don't call me oreo video very relatable to me but yeah that's so that's my history with kelly stamps i did not watch jenna brown that much she's a great deal younger than me i just couldn't relate to anything i was watching her just to kind of support her as a young black woman on the platform i was just uh too old things that she was going through are things that i like have already gotten past and i just didn't want to go back there so yeah i kind of completely stopped watching kelly stamps probably when she hit the 500,000 subscriber mark. That's probably when I completely stopped watching her. At that point, none of her content became relatable to me. I don't remember her making any more YouTube uh, videos, but I had stopped watching her. I just had completely lost interest um, in watching her. I think it also kind of threw me off. As a person who like strives to be vegan, when she said, she made a video saying, if you watch my videos, you'll notice that I don't eat meat. But then she's like cooking a fat ass steak in the next video. I was like, all right, I don't know why that rubbed me the wrong way. And I was like, okay, whatever. I don't know. It's, it just seems like such a pretentious thing to say. If you watch my videos, you'll notice that I don't eat meat. And then you cooking a fat ass Kobe beef steak. I don't like it. That is not why I stopped watching her clearly, but I don't know. That situation rubbed me the wrong way. I don't remember seeing anything else she posted after that. So Jenna made a video and we're just going to go through it now. So Jenna starts off her video pretty much saying she started watching Kelly Stamps around the same time I did, April of 2020. And by that point, she was at around the 65K mark. Um, and she said she really got a lot of joy out of watching her videos and she really enjoyed it. But now that it's been a year since she's been watching her videos, she says it doesn't feel the same as it used to. So people say that Jenna slicked through shade at Kelly Stamps 
And um, yeah, she kind of did. She said that her stuff has gotten kind of samey and monotonous, that what can you really do when there's a global Panda Express going on? But then she says that she was traveling, so that didn't stop her. I think that's definitely shade but like well-deserved shade. Kelly Stamps should not have been traveling during the pandemic. Nobody should have. And every other influencer has been called out for this. But I guess she's untouchable because she's a strong black queen, which is my issue kind of with this entire situation, right? There's a lot of this black women should support, blah, 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 blah. black women should support other black women and she's being a hater and she shouldn't have made that video because she was trying to get other people to unsubscribe from Kelly Stamps and she blah 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 all this stuff like right a lot of stuff a lot of accusations sorry about that a lot of accusations have been thrown at her because of this video that she made and a lot of people are upset because they're like you're gonna knock down a strong black woman who is being successful and she's gotten all these subscribers, you should go and support her. But should she? Let's let's talk about it. Some other shady things that she said, I won't say shady, but some other things that she said that could be seen as her throwing shade is that she says that Kelly Stamps has her life together now and she can't relate to that and she can't relate to buying Gucci bags and skirts and designer clothes. And she says that she thinks designer clothes are ugly and she can't understand why anybody wears them. Which, I mean, girl, same. I mean, honestly, this little cardigan I have on right now came from my job. These earrings came from freaking eBay. This necklace is actually a crystal and I made it. Isn't that cool? I made a little crystal necklace. This other necklace, um, it's actually an urn necklace that holds my father and this little bando i got from forever 21 so you know this is i, I can relate i can relate when she says that she can't relate to kelly stamps i feel like i'm getting ahead of myself she also says that her is it viewership of kelly stamps definitely took a turn when kelly stamps posted some video of her going out on a date and being taken out on this really fancy date and she said watching that video made her cry and she felt very lonely and childish, I'm guessing. She said she didn't feel like she was mature, so I'm assuming she felt childish. She mentioned not feeling grown. Then she moves on to a list of insecurities that she's had surrounding her body and feminine clothing, like skirts and bras. And she says that watching Kelly Stamps is no longer entertaining to her or making her feel good about herself anymore so she unsubscribed to her she said it's nothing to do against her but that she just wanted to rid herself of things that didn't make her feel good in her life and she acknowledges that it's not good to hate watch somebody which she said that she had begun doing and even though she advises other people to do the same thing in terms of like not hate watching somebody she never explicitly says yo y'all need to stop watching kelly stamps which a lot of people in the comments that i read and in the videos that i watched seems like they that's the message that they took away from the video is that she wants other people to stop watching kelly stamps when she never said that she then goes on to list some other youtubers who were all white and the only reason why i mentioned that was because that is something that was brought up quite frequently as well that there is an air of anti-blackness to the video that She's telling people to stop watching this young black woman and to go and watch these other white people. When in the video she says she likes to watch them because they don't put their relationship in her face. So the thing about that is she explicitly stated that she unsubscribed to Kelly Stamps because of that relationship video. So clearly she was really bothered by that relationship video so strongly that it made her unsubscribe to Kelly Stamps and stop watching her forever, right? Is what she said. She says she can't foresee her watching her again in the future. She then goes on to list these other YouTubers who happen to all be Caucasian, who uh, don't put their relationship in your face. My thoughts. I feel like obviously you kind of already get the gist of my thoughts. I don't think Jenna deserves any of the hate that she's giving. This girl gave her honest opinion about what she felt about a situation and I think that she showed immense maturity 
in that she recognized that she had begun to hate watch somebody, which is completely unhealthy. Is my camera straight? I don't know. And I think that posting this video was really brave, personally, because Kelly Stamps has a huge audience. She has a lot of followers, a lot of people that are still watching her content and she herself risks a lot of unfollowers, a lot of unfollowers, a lot of unfollows because she decided to post this video. I think it is really brave of her also because this is a decision that she made for her mental health. She said that watching Kelly Stamps wasn't making her feel good about herself. It was giving her insecurities. There's a lot to be said here, right? There's a lot that I'm not capable of talking about, right? I don't have the expertise, the knowledge. Obviously, watching people who are more successful than you on Instagram, on YouTube, on TikTok, on whatever, and seeing them doing better than you, when that person is your age and you feel like you started in a very similar place, you know, maybe in the beginning, Jenna probably felt, wow, that could be me. She's quirky like me. She is a person that black culture would consider to be odd or strange or whatever. And, you know, maybe she looked at Kelly Stamps and saw herself in her and now she can't see that anymore. Now Kelly has become someone unrecognizable to her and I think that's valid if she feels that way. A lot of people say that she shouldn't have posted a video about it, like that that was wrong, that that in and of itself was, was a bad thing. But if we can't talk about jealousy and envy and things like that, then, sorry, what, what is YouTube for? What's the point of having a platform if you're not gonna talk about these things? So, I mean, clearly the subject is taboo, right? Based on her, the reaction that was given, but why? Why is the subject of this young woman, specifically this young black woman, not feeling good when she watches this creator, who's also a young black woman of a similar age or maybe of a similar whatever you know why why is that such a taboo thing she never said you should unsubscribe from kelly stamps because she's coming she's becoming unrelatable i think she listed off specific reasons why kelly stamps is no longer relatable to her and she clearly i mean she related it to her and said i'm not interested in chanel bags i'm not interested in designer clothes i'm not interested in skirts she said, I'm not going out on dates. I'm really lonely and single and seeing things like that causes me pain. I mean, my first response would be like, probably don't watch that video. But maybe if she sees it show up on her feed, she feels like she has to watch it. Like I said, I mean, like she said, she had gotten to hate watching it. So maybe she saw that. I, I feel like I'm getting away. I feel like I'm a rambler, man. Cowboy rambler or something. I don't know. I'm hungry, you guys. I'm so, so hungry. My sister's coming over today and she likes to eat simple food. And I'm just like, man, I want something fancy. But I bet she's gonna want a cheese pizza or something. Man, that sucks. Personally, as far as Kelly Stamps go, I think that as YouTubers get bigger, they always run the risk of losing relatability. There are some YouTubers that I watched over the course of the past 10 years that have lost relatability to me. Bub's Beauty, Close Encounters, Whaley. They've all lost relatability and I stopped watching them a long time ago. Specifically, okay, so specifically with Close Encounters, I don't know, do you wanna flag me for anti-blackness because all of these women are Asian? Go ahead, I don't know, I just think it's weird. But I specifically wa stopped watching Close Encounters, also known as Jen M. I stopped watching her because I started, the reason I started following her was because she was a girl who was in college, who was around my age, and specifically, she was thrifting. She would go to thrift stores and, you know, style the clothes. And I could relate to that as a broke college student at that time. But when she started getting all these sponsorships and all this money, she started doing like clothing hauls, not from Goodwill, she started doing clothing hauls from Romwe and Nasty Gal and places that I couldn't shop at because I couldn't afford it. So I stopped watching her. Am I supposed to keep watching her even after she becomes unrelatable? You know, and I'm like, and if I had had a YouTube at the time, maybe I would have made a thing about it too because who knows how many other people are also hate watching Kelly Stamps. Could be a lot of people. And I think Jenna bringing awareness to this very complicated emotion of 
wanting to like someone and wanting to see them succeed but every success they get reminds you of your own failures or your own shortcomings it's a complicated feeling and it's something that i think a lot of us certainly i can relate to and she shouldn't be berated for sharing that just because you look at kelly stamps and feel inspiration that's great that's wonderful for you but not everybody's going to feel that way i look at kelly stamps videos and i don't feel jealousy or anything like that I'm also older than Kelly Stamps. I don't feel jealousy for her success. I can see why she's successful. And I knew that she was gonna be successful one day because it was clear that, you know, her content was very unique. When most of her content turned to the shopping sprees that I wasn't interested in because I also don't like Chanel or Gucci or whatever designer stuff she likes to wear. We also don't have a similar sense of style as you can see. Me and Kelly Stamps don't dress nothing alike, you know. I honestly would have definitely watched a video of her going out on a fancy date um, because I don't feel jealousy when I see people going out on dates. It actually does give me inspiration. I am desperately single. But that's just me personally, right? Do, do, do we see that? Do we see like, well, I mean, like I said, before, before I even stopped watching Kelly Stamps, I wasn't watching everything. I was not watching her vlogs where she was doing the K-pop dances around town because that wasn't interesting to me. But if she's sitting in a room and she's talking, she's looking at the camera and she's talking about something and I feel like she's talking to me, that was interesting to me. And she started getting away from that and she kind of changed. And if she's happy, that's all that freaking matters. If Jenna Brown is happier for not watching her, that's all that freaking matters, okay? Now, if Jenna Brown awaken some people to the fact that they were hate watching Kelly Stamps and they stopped subscribing to her, good. Good for them. They, you should not hate watch anybody. So I could definitely, sorry. So I can definitely see how people think that Jenna Brown's hating. I think it was the manner in which she said some of the things that she said, like about thinking that designer clothes are ugly, but I mean, that's her opinion, so what she thinks designer clothes are ugly i think she's just throwing her opinion in there i think when she listed all those things that she no longer likes about kelly stamps i think she's just showing that she, just how much she no longer has in common with kelly stamps i really really hope if it hasn't happened already i saw kelly stamps had a video out and i saw like one of the little blurbs that she was talking about on the on the on the on the thumbnail was losing relatability i was like I really hope that's not a response to the Jenna Brown issue just because like Kelly Stamps has so many more followers than she has. I don't want her to send an army after this girl who only has like 6,000 subscribers, right? Kelly Stamps has a hundred, Kelly Stamps has a hundred times more subscribers than Jenna Brown has. I really hope that she does not do any type of response to her. And as for Jenna, I really hope that she finds herself because that's what that's what's missing, right? If you're watching somebody and you're hate watching them, it's because you have not found who you are, who you wanna be. She clearly states that she doesn't have a sense of style. Maybe she needs to work on that. It sounds like she has some insecurities about her body, like her breasts and her butt. Uh, she says they're on the larger side, which makes sense because, you know, I was going to say it makes sense because she's a black woman, but black women are shaped all, all sorts of ways, right? But maybe the people that she's looking at, if she's looking, she's comparing herself to Kelly Stamps, who's obviously small. If she's comparing herself to white girls who are obviously, you know, not as curvaceous as a lot of black girls or Asian women then she might feel insecure in her own body and she's got to figure that out, right? And if Jenna watches this, girl, you got to figure yourself out. You know, you have to, I definitely think there's, there's nothing wrong with what you said and what, the, what you said, your video, that's all part of your journey. I think it was very important and very insightful for you to make that video. But I definitely think you got some homework to do on yourself. Don't stop there. Don't stop with removing the jealousy that was coming from Kelly Stamps. You have to find the root cause of that jealousy and you have to build upon that so that you can enjoy Kelly Stamps' videos again. Or at least that's how I see it. And if you don't, and you don't wanna watch Kelly Stamps ever again, that's your freaking prerogative, man. Don't let anybody bully you into saying like, oh, you shouldn't feel that way. Whatever, do you, be happy, do what you need to do to be happy. I wrote here in my notes, the thing about money is that it gives you the power to be the person you've always wanted to be. 
and Kelly Stamps can now be the person she's always wanted to be. And we're no longer looking at her through the filter of the struggle. And if some people can't relate to that, oh well. And I think I'll end it on that note. So that's all I have to say. Um, if you're a person who has been subscribed to me for a while, stay tuned. I just thought I'd give you like a mild update with my life. My last video, you'll remember that I said I wanted to be a booktuber and that I wanted to talk about books and media and shit. And I still want to do that, but I don't, I, I, I don't think that that's all I want my channel to be. I think I just want to keep doing what I was doing before where I just talked about whatever I wanted to talk about. I don't know, man. I thought I wanted to be a booktuber because I wanted to write books. So I'm like, well, if I like writing books, then I'll like talking about them, which I probably would like. But I don't know if people want to watch videos about that. And then there was a lot that I wanted to talk about. Like I was watching other people make YouTube videos and I was feeling like this burn of creativity inside the pit of my stomach. And I was like yearning to make videos again. And it was weird because I always saw making YouTube videos as kind of being like a chore. And all of a sudden it went from being a chore to being something that I had a burning desire to do. I missed it. I did, I just missed it. I missed every part of it. I missed coming up with content and I missed editing. Freaking missed editing. I missed posting videos and I'm still getting comments um, from previous videos that I've watched, like watched. I'm still getting comments from previous videos that I've made. Um, especially like the Fem Cell video and sometimes the Destiel video, you know. Definitely get a lot of videos on the very first video I ever made, which is still the most popular video on my channel, which is Zodiac Signs That Like To Fight. That is the most popular video. It is the first video I ever uploaded. Girl. I also paused because I wanted to finish editing my book. Like I did, I wanted to finish editing my book and I thought like, let me get it out the way. Let me edit my book and just, you know, send it off to a a publisher but it's been really slow going it's been several months now and it's still only halfway edited and i don't know i feel like i got my juices back and you know stay tuned and all that junk i am glad to have you here glad for you to be here you know stay with me watch me talk about more shit you know let me know when stuff happens too if you love me you'll let me know because i love talking about shit but I be in like a little bubble, you know? So sometimes I don't know what's going on and I gotta be, you know, somebody gotta tell me. So anyway, other than that, glad to see you here. If you want, if you stayed and you're not a subscriber, I don't like telling people to subscribe to my channel. I don't know, does that work? Does telling you you should subscribe to my channel actually work? Put it in the comment below. Have you ever subscribed to anybody's channel because they told you to? I don't think that's how it works. But I'm so glad to have you here and I will see you next time. Is that what I used to do? What did I used to do? Peace? I say I will see you next time and then they say peace, but I don't, I don't know, I'll see you next time, peace. I remember doing that.